Oh there. So what do you do when you're stranded in Los Anchorage and it's fall? Well, let's see if we can winterize this bus and at least not blow up anything else. So I guess before I start this whole debacle, I should probably bring you guys inside, show you how this thing is supposed to work. And uh, well, maybe next year, because it's a pretty cool system. Let me show you. Okay, now it's a little dark in here and it's not tidy because right now we're in maintenance mode. Be gentle. Okay, so the way the system works, this is the port side, driver's side. This is actually our onboard water tank. When you fill it from outside through that weird valve, this is where the overflow is then that runs under the bus. Back here, we've got a solenoid. I don't know what that does either. A water supply of some kind off and on. Then we got another bypass over there. I've traced them all back. This bypass here is actually the water heater bypass. So that would be the hot water line back there. Bypasses the water heater for winterizing. The other one operate, actually it's this valve here, which goes overboard where they're controlled. Pretty discreet. You don't really even notice that it's here. So the main water drain is this one here where you turn the dial and then it actuates that valve. The one for the water heater is this one up here. And then the one that puts the 175 PSI of air system into the water system is this switch here. The only thing is I can hear it, but I can't verify that it's actually working. So rather than taking chances, we're just gonna winterize this the old fashioned way like it was any other camper. But I do wanna get that system working because it's a pretty sweet system. Now in order to do my whole setup here, I'll be able to walk you through most of it, but at some point I'm gonna to have to light off the generator to get some power so I can run the drill. Now, I haven't looked up a single YouTube video on how to do this, so I seriously suspect I'm doing it the wrong way, but I'm gonna do it the way that makes sense to me. I don't know, we'll see if it matches. Okay, so what do we got for this debacle? I've got this hose designed for one of those hose reels. It's six feet long. It's got the male end, the female end. I don't know, do you call that something else now? Got the RV antifreeze. I suspect the only reason they had it in stock is because they're getting 10 bucks a gallon for it, which that's a little steep for RV antifreeze, but whatever. And I'm gonna use a drill pump. And of course the keys because I still haven't removed this lock. I hate this lock. Okay, so I got this thing open. So my water supply is right over here. Start rigging this up. Got my quick disconnect that I'm gonna put on my hose. Always wind up with a lot of garbage. Frustration free packaging people. I got my quick disconnect that I'm gonna put on my hose reel thing and see if I can get something set up here. Frustration free packaging. You don't have to put all this crap on stuff when you sell it. Charge a little bit less and just not have a bunch of junk on it. People who don't know how to use a hose shouldn't be buying a hose. You know the hardest part about this YouTube stuff? We're not allowed to have music playing. I hope you appreciate the sacrifice. Now the way I'm doing this would pretty much apply to any standard RV. Sorry, that'd be a F-22 Raptor. It's out there protecting your freedom. So it's worth the inconvenience. Oh, oh, oh that one's coming close. Might get loud in a second. So here's what the pump looks like. Here we go. See, it's just a drill driven pump. It's got in and out, in and out. What I liked about this kit is it also came with a suction hose. And what I really like is it's got a little piece of plastic here that keeps it tidy. Now there's a difference between frustration free packaging and packaging you can use over. You know, like grandma and grandpa did and they kept that old waffle iron in there from General Electric for like a thousand years. There we go. Lubricate before each use. Didn't bring any. I wonder if we have any Vaseline. I'm gonna check. Well, we don't have Vaseline, but we have the next best thing. We just have this hand soap, which will work as a lubricant for this hose thing. That way I won't have to listen to all the plumber guys give me grief because I'm not using food grade silica. When I work on the well pump back at the cabin, that's exactly what we use. We're not at the cabin. It's combat rules here. The suction hose goes in here, so I'll put a little more on here. Just to dabble do ya. Turn to our demographics. Y'all are probably old enough, you know what that means. If you haven't gone completely senile. So whatever happened to just regular keys? I'll put these plastic things, they're a little cheaper to make and that's why they make them that way. I'm gonna hook up as much as I can before I fire up the generator, because once I light that off, you're not gonna hear anything. You can tell all this stuff's new, it's really fighting me. Let me know in the comments. I think get 10 bucks a gallon for this stuff down there in the lesser 48. Anyhow. Here I felt bad about the noise the generator's gonna make. So just shove this in here. Kind of like a Slurpee. Now let me show you what I'm going to do inside. How many times can you take your shoes off and put your shoes on? Yes! <laughs> now this selector would be in here if this was still stock. I'm going to switch this over to generator. And then I'm going to go back and make sure I got power turned on on the fuse panel.
There's our shipboard fuse panel that's part of the inverter setup. And the Wonder Lodge one is hidden back here. See this innocent looking towel rack? I'll check this out. Huh? Pretty cool. Here we go. I always get a little nervous lighting this thing off because... Uh-oh. See the inverter's doing something. Dead battery. Just keep tabs on that make sure it doesn't light the bus on fire. Got to make sure all my faucets are shut off. And I've got a few of them. This is my low point down here with the propane tank. Turn on the 12 volt so I have a water pump. Okay, let's go ahead and engage the water pump. Jen will probably get mad at me. I'm gonna use, if I can find a clear glass, I'll be able to use this one. See if I can get some of the RV stuff in there. Okay, still not on fire. That's good. Now let's see if this will actually work. All right, let's give it a go. Now let's go see if there's any in the kitchen, which is the farthest away, which is why I went with that one. Sure, I'm grateful that generator runs so well. Still not on fire. Well, nothing in the glass. Nothing at all. Shoot. Oh, I left this one open. That's why. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, the pump didn't get hot. That's good. We're gonna check that. Now let's go back and see if we got anything in the in the glass there. Yeah, and if we did, I'm probably in some kind of trouble. We'll mitigate that later. Oh, oh, would you look at that, baby? So somehow I unstuck the valve as well. Check this out. The air system is working. See that? Oh yeah, baby. Well, what if you already bought that? It works. Ha <laughs> ha. Need a doot. Don't want to leave it under pressure. Awesome. Victory. So one thing I almost forgot, people were asking me, how's that solar holding up? Well, I tell you, it's awesome. It's the Renogy 200 watt, you know, two 100 watt panels. Most importantly with the MPPT charge controller, which if I'm not mistaken, is like at 48 volts. So that if you get 48 volts and one amp, it'll knock that down to 12 volts which 12 times four, and you'll have four amps. I think that's how that works. So everything worked. The whole setup, the drill and the low point drain and everything, it worked. Okay, I'm just opening that up to a little, a little bit out there. Favorite bumper sticker, love it. It worked, it totally worked. Now you might be asking yourself, self, why does Larry have a bucket? I'm gonna go ahead and hang on to this and I'm gonna put it in there along with all this other stuff. Because let's face it, if you're not organized with an RV, well, then you're just a, what do they call that, a hot mess? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. I learned something. You know, the traditional way to winterize an RV. So is it the right way for a Wander Lodge? No. But now that I got the onboard system working, that means we can take it out whenever we want and we can still use it. But I still like having the RV antifreeze in there. It takes care of the P-traps. This gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We could really use a little more feedback. Like, what do you guys want to see? Let us know. We got beautiful Alaska here. We're not taking the bus out again this year, probably. Well, maybe. Morgan's got a swim meet somewhere in Alaska. Maybe we'll try to take it. Really appreciate all you guys. And remember, be kind. Ahoy there. Ahoy there. See, at some point, I'm gonna have to. Ahoy there. This hose is a little stiffer than I like. Don't joke. Um, ahoy there. There, can you see that? Shit. It worked. Ahoy there. Yeah. Whew. It uh, used to have something that kept it open, but anyway, maybe it's too soon for that. Ahoy there. How you doing? All right.